So as always, we're going to start off with Colossians 3 and 17, giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And be worthy to be praised for everything. Hello, y'all. Hello, y'all. Yes. So Colossians 3 and 17, it reads, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by how shalom Mashiach you will shine. Give thanks to the Most High and the Father by our Shema Mashiach So we're giving all praise and glory and thanks to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Forever and ever and ever. That's his name. Forever and ever and ever. You can't go wrong with using the name of the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said that's his name forever. Memorial to all generations. And Exodus 3.15. He told that Moses to go out and tell the elders the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I've looked down from heaven and seen the affliction that we were going through in Egyptian captivity. So here we are now, still in an Egyptian captivity, which means bondage, captivity, and slavery, as it is today, whether you recognize it or not. We're still involved in our captivity. And we're not going to be released until the most high determines he's going to allow us to come out of this captivity to set up a righteous world in this earth that's why when people look at us as Hebrew Israelites they have a problem with us I don't know if they have a problem they have a problem with the righteousness that we're going to set up on this earth because that's what this Bible is talking about and that's what it's all about and if you want righteousness in this earth then you're wicked and you're going to die right with this earth and the things that are prophesied to happen in this earth against the wicked that's where you're going to be at. Whether you Israel, whether you another nation, it don't matter. Most are going to wipe away all the wickedness out of this world and set up righteousness in this earth. When you don't want a righteous kingdom, but you ain't got to be concerned about uh, bars on your house and, and the things that they're doing that's all wicked, drugs in your neighborhood, guns, you know, killings. It ain't just in our in our hood. It's in, out there where you white folks live at too. Y'all the main serial killers, you know, so... And where you gonna run? Like people talk about running away from America. Where you gonna run? From the sky. The most high see everything. His eyes 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So anywhere to run, anywhere you gonna go. The most high say he is the power. He always gonna be the power. Forever and ever and ever. And in the end, he gonna be all in all. Believe that. That's why everybody looking at trying to run or trying to dodge. You can't dodge him. He's all power. You know, we gotta. Exalt him to the utmost because he's worthy to be praised for everything. So let's look at Deuteronomy 11 chapter. And we'll start at 26 verse. Deuteronomy 11 and 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Hear that, Israel? Because Deuteronomy 1 and 1 said, These be the words that Moses spake to all Israel on this side of Jordan. So it's talking to we the 12 tribes of Israel. So he said what he said, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. This is what he said he's given us, you know, whether you want to accept it or not. You know, and he's always said that. Look at Deuteronomy uh, 30, Deuteronomy the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. He said, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, you got a choice to choose a blessing or a curse. In other words, life or death. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, like we're doing now. Whither the Most High thy power have driven thee, and shall return unto the Most High thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Where he say? This ain't in our kingdom. He said, if we remember the blessing and the curse and bring it to mind among all the nations. Because he said he's going to scatter us among the nations and we didn't follow his law, statute, and commandments. And here we are. As Israelites, the 12 tribes, they're scattered among all nations. Verse 2, and shall return unto the most high thy power and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thine heart, all your mind, and with all thy soul, that then the Most High thy power will turn thy captivity 
and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the most high thy power have scattered thee. Verse 15, he tells us again. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. How about that? In that I command thee this day to love the most high thy power, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the most high thy power shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. See, what do we do? We chose the latter. The evil, the curse. That's what we chose. Here it is right here. And just nine and eleven. Here it is, this is what we chose, Daniel 9 and 11. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned, meaning broken his laws, against him, we sinned against the Most High. And he have confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. Remember, you got a choice to choose good or evil. So this is what happened. A great evil came upon us. Under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Upon us. In our land, as it is written in the law of Moses. All this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the most high our power that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. What's the truth? Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Understand the law of the most high. Therefore, the most high watched upon the evil. He looked upon the evil that happened to us and brought it upon us for the most high deal. For the Most High, our power is righteous in all his works, which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. We didn't obey him, so therefore this evil came upon us. See? Go back to Deuteronomy 11 and 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. This is what we subject to and been subject to because we refuse to obey the voice of the Most High. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Well, we're going to go in today. They say, I call heaven and earth to, re to record this day against you. Talking to us, the children of Israel. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the most high thy power. And that thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life. And the length of days. Length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the most high swear unto thy fathers. To Abraham. To Isaac. And to Jacob, who was the forefather of these 12 tribes of Israel, to give them. You see? And that's where we are now, people. This is, this is all set up for us that are coming back truly and righteously and sincerely to the voice of the Most High in keeping His laws, statutes, commandments. That's why you look at Deuteronomy 1 and Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass over and over again. You hear the same thing. That's why the most I speak one shade twice, never see if it not. Over and over again, the same thing. So all you say, oh, I heard that already. Well, tell the most high this. Tell the most high, don't put it, don't just take it out of the book. Why do you gotta repeat himself over and over and over again to us? Because we stiff necked and hard hearted and rebellious. 
You heard what it said? We, yeah, all Israel have transgressed the laws of the Most High. That's why you better come back. Just the kingdom right here. You want me 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken me, listen, use unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's the kingdom right there. Because the saints going to take the kingdom, possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So this is what we're looking at when righteousness come on this earth. We're going to be set up above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if. That's a condition. The only condition. Thou shall hearken me and listen to the voice of the Most High thy power and do his commandments. Okay? Back to uh, Deuteronomy 11.27. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Most High, your power, which I command you this day. Same thing over and over again. And a curse if you would not obey the commandments of the Most High, your power, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods. Go after other gods, other idols, which ye have not known. See? See, that's why he's going to curse us, though. Going after other gods. Following these, and these other gods could be in all these religions that's dealing with going back to Nimrod and Semiramis, but you don't know that because you ain't did your research. But I'm telling you, that's what you're dealing with. That's what they do. Look, they tell you you ain't under the law, but you under mercy and grace. Let me go to pray. Deuteronomy 28, 15. He repeated it again to us. That's like I'm going to have to repeat it because it's here. So why not hear it over and over and over again? If the Most High says, okay with him, it's written. Holy Man wrote this Bible as they were moved by the Holy Spirit of the Most High. So Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass if, that's a condition, thou would not hearken me and listen unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And you notice from verse 3 to 14 are blessings, and from verse 16 in Deuteronomy 28 chapter all the way to 68 are the curses. And since we don't obey his voice, we don't obey his voice, then all these curses came upon us, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah, we, we rocking them right now. Everywhere, in every shape, every, every kind of way you can think of is upon us, these curses. Jeremy 11 and 29. This shall come to pass Wait a minute. Let me go back to 28 again. I ain't, I don't, I'm about to dwell on it. Like I said, I'm going to go into this deeper. And a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of the Most High, your power, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day and follow the laws of the Most High, which you know you go to church, they say you're not under the law, but you're under mercy and grace. To go after other gods or other idols which ye have not known. Come on. You show me the Baptist church in, in, in the law. The Catholic church. Jehovah's Witness. Seventh-day Adventists. Holiness. Church of God in Christ all their life. What you name it? What are you at in these laws? Well, you gave us laws, statutes, commandments to go by. Point blank, no end, ifs and buts about it. But he told us he told us this in Jeremiah 10, 1 and 2. Look. He told us this. You know, I went through, through excuses last night. And all these, a lot of these prophets that said they didn't want to, they didn't want to do the work of the Most High. They didn't want to do it. The Most High said, hey, you're going to do it. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Hear ye the word which the Most High speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. He's talking to the twelve tribes of Israel. Thus said the Most High, Learn not the way of the heathen. See? He told us not to be 
learning the way of the heathen. We not just made up the signs of heaven for the heathen are just made up them. Yeah, they that's why it tells you in Psalm 96 and 5. You gotta look at what happened to us. That's why I look at what happened and the solution is all in the Bible. It's all here. Psalm 96 and 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. See? All the gods of the nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel are idols. But the Most High made the heavens. Why do you say the Most High made the heavens? Because they worship in the sun and the moon and the stars and the galaxy and everything you can think of in the sky. Except for the Most High that's beyond the firmament or the ozone layer into the fourth dimension. They're not going there. And they never going to know what said. They That's what the way of the Most High, they, they have not known it. They got to be taught, just like we have to be taught, everybody got to be taught. So what happened? He said, learn not the way of the heathen, because all the gods of the nations are idols, and what we do. Just what he said, don't do. It's all here. Psalm 136. Or, uh, no, 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 106. It's a lot here. I'm ahead of myself. Psalm 106.35 But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. What do you think that, you think that means? We learned to follow their gods, which are idols. Just as, just as it is today. You know, you look at Caesar Borgia, that so-called white image, right up in the church. In our churches. All up in the houses. You know, the Last Supper. Five people in there. The Borgia family. That's it. Do you think when you see that? I, sh I show it all the time. Nobody even see that. That's how blinded we are in darkness and ignorance. But all praise the most high bring us out of it. So, but we're mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols. See? All the gods of the nations are what? Idols. We served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yeah, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils as it is today, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a whoring with their own inventions. Created all these different religions and different uh, sets of how to worship idols, because it ain't the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at all. Point blank. And when you go in there and say you gotta follow him, and the only way you follow him, the only way you're going to follow his ways is to follow his laws, statutes, commandments. You got a problem. They say, oh, we need it. Christ nailed the law to the cross. Yeah, he nailed the law of sacrifice because he was the ultimate sacrifice for the children of Israel. You know, they all twisted. Call themselves Gentiles. That's why I say you sacrifice your sons and your daughters to devils. Going up, sending, sending our church, our, our brothers and sisters, little young children up in into the church system. They have them sacrificing the devils, straight up. Because you, you children of Israel, you the children of the devil too. Don't get it twisted. A lot of you ain't nothing but the children of the devil. As it is written. And I'm not saying something I can't prove out of the scriptures. Straight up. That's what Masha Shai said. Ye are your father the devil. In John 8, 44. And thus your father you would do. Listen. Verse 39. Thus, they, thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Most High kindled against his people, which was that he abhorred his own inheritance. He hated us because we went out to other idols of these nations, as it is today. You can't prove it no different. And what do you call yourself? A Gentile? Our people go to church, they don't call themselves Israelites. They don't call themselves the people of the book. They say, oh no, you've been programmed to think. Your brain been polluted to think that the Jews are the ones that killed him, I shot that shot. Can you kill somebody now? Oh, you 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 free as you think? No. Who gonna do that? The so-called white man, he got the power. This is his kingdom. He don't want to determine who's gonna die, who ain't gonna die. Right? Same it was with in the in the Roman Empire. The so-called Italian Caucasian were the superpower of the earth. They're the ones that killed him, I shot that shot. So get it right. That's why we're in the condition we're in now because we follow the way of the heathen. They're going to lead you straight to hell with them. Straight up. 
And I'm and heathen talking about the nations and Israel. Because y'all made yourself heathens too. As it is today. By doing what? Following their same ways. It's so custom custom. That's why you gotta become a new creature. Be born again. Become a new man or a new woman. All your old ways you're doing. If you get older, that's why I say it's hard to put new wine in old bottles. You know, a lot of people that's older, it's hard for them to change because they're so caught up in their rebellious ways of not knowing and want to still remain dumb and dumber and dumbest. You see? That's why you call young people to be able to, because they're not polluted with all the madness of this world, regardless of how holy you think you are. You know, it's not easy. I know it takes a sacrifice. You got to humble yourself to be able to be taught and to listen. That's a lot of problems that we have. You don't want to listen. Listen is an of responsibility. If you can't listen, you can't get this. You're not going to get it because your brain already polluted. Depending on how long you've been on this earth, your brain been polluted for a long time. And you're always trying to bring in what you've been, what you have learned in the pollution of your brain that you have been polluted with. That's why you got to let it go. A lot of you can't do that. That's why I say you can't. You, it's hard to put new wine in old bottles. Because you can't let go of all that and start all over again. That's what I do. I start it all over again. So forget, forget whatever I know. I'm going to start from scratch and learn just like I knew nothing. And then you can't compare nothing to the truth. Ain't nothing more powerful than the truth. And that's how you come up on higher levels of spiritual understanding. The law of the spirit. You know, we're going over the law of the letter right now, but we're going to go higher if you look at what's bringing out what's being brought out in the spirit the law of the spirit you know but how you gonna get past that if you can't even get to the law that we're looking at right here change it's a change people you don't want to change they remain the same and go to hell like we say you got a choice to choose what he just said a blessing or a curse you will remain in the curse that's on you Verse 27, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Most High, your power, which I command you this day. And a curse, verse 28, this is Deuteronomy 11, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Most High, your power, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods, follow these other nations, gods that are idols, which ye have not known. See, some things we didn't know anything about. And new things come up, then we jump right in it. And it shall come to pass when the most high thy power have brought thee in unto the land which thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side, Jordan, by the way where the sun goeth down? In the land of the Canaanites, which dwelled in the champaign over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Mirah, for ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the most high your power giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. How many times was I telling us this? You, I mean, y'all say, oh, I heard that already. How many times the most, you hear the most high telling us the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? Like we got ADHD, right? All of us. <laughs> you got to repeat it over and over and over and over again. So what you got to say? When you was dead, we all was there, but he had to keep repeating it over and over and over again for us to get this. That's why some things, I heard that already, but you may go through all these particular life stories. The Bible's a book of life, basic instruction before leaving earth, you know. It's all instruction of how to live your life righteously. And wickedly. Therefore, if you understand it, you understand when somebody's righteous, you understand when somebody's operating in wickedness. Deuteronomy 12 and 1. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land with the most high thy power, 
the power of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. I mean, is, is he not saying it again? Over and over and over again. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye have possessed serve their gods. Let me read that again. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods. So we say, destroy all the places where these nations serve their gods. It's coming back to this, y'all. When the Most High put the spiritual power and sin for the monarchs, he's going to be destroying all the nations and their gods that want to hold on to their gods. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods. And destroy the names of them out of that place. See? You got to get rid of all of this because go what happened? Israel won't follow the same suit. What is that over there? I'll be a nosy. Oh, let me see. Nosy, nosy, nosy. Let me see what's up, what they're doing over there. If you give it all that, they see it. Oh, they're going to lock right into it. I mean, come on. They even had uh, Israelites right there with the hellish comet people. With the Nike tennis shoes. It was, we was right there. We was right there. Jim Jones, you name it, we right there. Following the same suit. And that's real. That's why we can't do that. Whatever we did before, we can't do it anymore. That's why these are instruction manuals and of showing us how we are to do certain things, how we're not to do certain things. Very important. So we'll be all right. We'll be all right. But if we don't want to do it, then the curse is going to come upon us. It's going to come to the point where it's going to be death. You really get your attention then. Oh yeah. When you bring that, when you bring death, people pay attention then. Just like right now, they wouldn't be, if, the, if we wasn't getting put to death as such, nobody caring about us, like caring about us. People use, take certain things or instances of certain mishaps or, or negatives and take advantage to try and make money off people too. That's why he told us, get rid of everything, everything you see that they had. Anything that they used to worship their idols, get rid of it. They burn their groves with fire, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods. And destroy the names of them out of that place. Destroy the names of them. Get rid of them, period. Er eradicate them so they don't, it's like they never existed. You shall not do so unto the most high your power, but unto the place which the most high your power shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto this habitation shall you seek, and thither shall thou come. And thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and heave offerings of your hand of your hand and your vows and your free will offerings and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks and there ye shall eat before the most high your power and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto ye and your households wherein the most high thy power have blessed thee See? Having a good time, barbecuing and so forth. Ye shall not do all, excuse me, ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. 
Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. See, every man think he's right in his own eyes. Let him tell it, right? But you got to be right according to the scriptures. You got to be right according to these scriptures because you could be off. Especially you don't know the scriptures, then and you just operating your own, and that's why you got to get out of this, this, these, right now, it's all emotions, too many emotions, you know? That's why you got to come out of that. Come out of that so you don't be caught up in it. Um, because in the end, you'll see that it's wrong. And the most I'm going to deal with you. Look at, uh, Proverbs 16 and 25. You know what it said? Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You think you're doing right. You feel right to you, but the end is the way of death. You know, that death could be most of knocking your butt off the block where you ain't dealing with the truth no more. Then you become a dead Israelite. You might call yourself Israelite or not. All Israelite not lie. Mosiah is the power of the living. He knocked you off the block of who you are and what you're dealing with and what you was dealing with. A lot of brothers and sisters, they were all in this. Now they're not dealing with it. So that's a dead state of mind as far as being deaf too. And the Mosiah can kill you. Straight up. Put you to death. Deuteronomy 12 and 8. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. That's why it says, once again, Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Verse 9. Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart or mind divides his way, but the most high directed his steps. See? So you gotta let the most high direct your steps. Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's goings are of the most high. How can a man then understand his own ways? <laughs> most I directing you what you should do. That's why when it tells you, and sometimes you don't even recognize it because your mind not tuned in to realize he showed you this when you went to sleep or a vision. Uh, Job 33 and 14. For the most I speak at once, yeah, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. See? That's why you hear me saying it over and over again. These scriptures going into your membrane, hopefully, over and over again, because the most I did it. He the one that wrote this. He the one that had this written. You see? You say most I speak once, yea, twice. Even we just say the same thing over and over again about. Follow his commandments. You know, a blessing and a curse. You hear that over and over again. It says, Job 33 and 14. For the most high speaking once, yeah, twice. Yet man perceives it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed. Then he opened up the ears of men. Let me say he directed their past. 
Then he opened up the ears of men and sealed their instructions. See? That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. See? It's going to be the way the Most High says it's going to be. And no other way. Going back to Deuteronomy 12 and 8. You shall not do all that. Excuse me. You shall not do all after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the most high your power giveth you. I mean, we haven't reached the land of Canaan as of yet. The land that the most high has given us. Say, but when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the most high your power giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety, then shall there excuse me, then there shall be a place which the most high your power shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offering of your land, of your hand, and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the Most High. And ye shall rejoice before the Most High your power, ye and your sons and your daughters, and your men servants and your maid servants, and the Levite that is within your gates. For as much as he have no part nor inheritance with you. The Levites had, you know, they were scattered among all the tribes. That's why we had to take care of the Levites. Take heed to thyself, which is yourself, that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest. So there's a certain place that you had to value your burnt offerings. They don't, don't value your burnt offerings in any place. But in the place which the Most High shall choose in one of thy tribes, there shall thou offer thy burnt offerings, and there shall thou do all that I command thee. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the dietary law, according to the blessing of the Most High thy power, which he hath given thee. The unclean and the clean may eat thereof, or as of the roebuck and as of the heart. Only ye shall not eat the blood. Ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. You're not supposed to eat the blood. Thou mayest not eat within thy gates the tide of thy corn, or of thy wine, or of thy oil or the firsting of thy herds, or of thy flock, nor any of thy vows which thou vowest, nor thy free will offerings, or heave offerings of thine hand. But thou must eat them before the Most High thy power, in the place which the Most High thy power shall choose, thou, and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and thou shalt rejoice before the Most High thy power in all that thou puttest thine hands unto. See? Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite as long as thou livest upon the earth. See? The Levite was supposed to be taken care of. They were the priests. Remember, he didn't give them a portion of land. They lived among all the tribes to administrate the law. That's why they had to be taken care of. The priest. Verse 20. When the Most High thy power shall enlarge thy border, as he hath promised thee, and thou shalt say, I will eat flesh, because thy soul longeth to eat flesh, thou mayest eat flesh, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. If the place which the Most High thy power have chosen to put his name there be too far from thee, then thou shalt kill of thy herd and of thy flock, which the Most High have given thee, as I commanded thee. And thou shalt eat in thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. 
said, it's too far to go, so just kill in your gates. <laughs> Whatever it is within your gates, whatever you have killed. Verse 16. Only ye shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it upon the earth as water. Gotta drain the blood out of the earth. You're not supposed to eat the blood. That's so when you see anyone cooking a steak and it's, it's rare and all that stuff, blood all you're not supposed to eat blood. So we got our meat you should well done verse 22 even as the roebuck and the heart is eaten so thou shalt eat them the unclean and the clean shall eat of them alike only be sure that thou eat not the blood once again for the blood is the life see the blood is the life and thou may have not eat the life with the flesh. So the blood is a life. So therefore, if you eating bloody meat, that's an abomination. That's against the law of the most high. All you out there that like your meat rare, that's an abomination. According to the most high. Verse 24. Thou shalt not eat it. Thou shalt pour it upon the earth as water. Isn't that what we said in verse 16? So I said, Most I speak once, yea, twice, man, we see but not. You see, he repeating himself. Oh, he doesn't say, Oh, I heard that scripture already. Yeah, he repeat himself because you need to hear it again. Because somebody else needs to hear it. And it ain't just for you, selfish one. It's for all of us. That's why you see the most I repeat himself. Verse 25, thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with thee. So if you eat it, it's not going to go well with you. You will have problems. And with thy children after thee, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Most High. Only thy holy things which thou hast, and thy vows thou shalt take, and go into the place which the Most High shall choose. And thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, the flesh, and the blood upon the altar of the Most High thy power, and the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured upon, poured out upon the altar of the Most High thy power, and thou shalt eat the flesh. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children, after thee forever. And thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Most High thy power. That's keeping the laws of the Most High. Verse 29. And the Most High thy power shall cut off the nations from before thee. What are you going to do? Cut off these nations. I thought he loved everybody. He said, cut off these nations before us. Will it thou go to possess them and thou succeedest them and dwelleth in their land? See? Take heed of thy to thyself, that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods. Remember that all the gods of the nations are idols. We set that up initially. We don't follow after their gods because their gods are idols. Saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Don't be curious about how these nations serve their God because that's a trap. 